We've been living on Silver Fox for just over two years now. But we've lived on narrowboats on and off for about 17 years. Yes, we? we have, yes. Our first one back in 2004 was called The Great Escape. We've never seen that one since, have we? We haven't, no. And we've had some amazing adventures. We've seen places that just look totally different from the water. A few nail-biting moments, lots of laughs and a few tears. We wouldn't change it for anything, no. But it's not for everybody. And life on a narrowboat can take some adjusting to. Oh God, yes. Doesn't help when content creators like us and TV shows portray boating as this romanticized fantasy. So over the next two weeks, we're gonna show you 10 reasons why you really shouldn't live on a narrowboat. <laughs> and then 10 reasons why you absolutely should. Reason number one is you will lose money. Boats generally depreciate in value, whereas property generally increases in value over time. And that's because as soon as you put a boat in water, there's a reaction between the oxygen and the water and the metal, and it starts to eat away at it. It does take a long time. It does, and you get pitting, little tiny holes, which if you don't look after it, turn into bigger holes. And then, glug, 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 down you go. That wine. <laughs> Now don't get me wrong, you do have to spend money on a house. You've got doors and windows to look after yeah, and your roof true. to make sure your roof isn't leaking. And there's all sorts of little things you need to do in the house. But on a boat, there's a lot more to do. So it does cost you more money over a shorter period of time. Now saying that, boat prices have actually been going up recently, which is very unusual. And that's due to all the things that have been going on around the world. Oh yes. And people want to get away. So used boat prices have been going up and new boat prices are going through the roof at the moment because the price of steel is just so high. Who's buying all the steel? I have no some idea. Some bloke in some country has got a garden full of base plates. Some, somebody building a big steel house. <laughs> we have done a separate video on all the costs involved in running and living on a narrowboat and there's a link in the video description and if you're watching on a mobile device there should be one up above Sean's head. Reason number two, it's not always the peaceful, stress-free life that it can be portrayed to be. At the end of the day, you're living on a public footpath, so people are gonna be walking up and down all day. You're gonna get people shouting and running and drinking and being a bit leery. You're gonna get people walking and exercising the dogs all day. Yeah, pick up your poop. The dogs or theirs. Both. <laughs> You can moor out in the middle of nowhere, but what you generally find, somebody will come and moor right next to you, in front of you or behind you. And you think that little old lady in that 40 foot springer with a little cute dog and the flowers on the top is gonna to be a quiet neighbor. You wait until two o'clock in the morning. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> she likes it hardcore, she oh does. Oh my God, I hope we're talking about music. She does like it hardcore. <laughs> you never know. Don't get me wrong, it is possible to find peaceful places, but yes. a lot of the time, you're gonna get noise. You might get people mooring up and working on the boat, getting grinders out, and saws, and generators, and engines, especially in the colder months. Yes. So you just got to be aware of that. It is a bit more difficult for me, and I'm biased, because I've got high-functioning autism and ADHD, so I have sensory issues, and noises like that tend to get to me more than me, people like Sean, who's proper chill. So if you don't mind the noise and you like the hubbub of a community, it's fine. But just don't come into this expecting it to be completely stress-free and quiet all the time. Reason number three. Who sang that? Reasons to be cheerful, part three. Uh, oh, drop it in the comments, because we, uh, we ain't got time for this right now. <laughs> it will test even the strongest of relationships. Boat life, not reasons to be cheerful. At the end of the day, you're living in a confined six foot wide space. So you've got to be a bit of a 
what's the word? Uh, not ventriloquist. Contortionist? No. Contortionist, yes. that's the one. And sometimes you've got to pass each other. It's like you're doing the tango, isn't it? It is. And unlike a railway carriage, the good thing is you can have a bit of friction when you pass them. On a boat, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, living in such confined quarters, you can get on each other's nerves. Because if one of you is in a little bit of a bad mood, it doesn't take much when you're living in such a tight space to tip you over the edge, does it? No, it don't, does it, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> So get out the boat if you're going to do that. At least give yourself some space. We have two TVs so we can separate yeah. and watch TV separately and just have a bit of space to ourselves. I can't imagine how like a family of four could live on a boat this size, can you? Yeah, I it can't. won't be four for long, will it? No, <laughs> I can't imagine another two. Well, I can't, I mean, if we, if, we, if we were to have another two people on the boat, one would be Justin Bieber and the other, I think, would be Hugh Edwards. <laughs> I like to know what's going on in the world, that's, that's why. He, that's knows, bizarre. he knows what's going on, doesn't he? Well, he does. Reason number four is not everything's on tap on a boat, apart from the red wine. Things like electricity and water and gas and coal and diesel and logs. You've got to make sure you've got enough of all these on the boat to sustain you, especially and importantly during the winter months where it's very cold. Now our water tank carries about 350 litres of water, about 80 gallons, and that will last us about a week, maybe two weeks if we really want it to. But it just means short showers. You can't have a nice, long, relaxing soak in a hot bath anymore. No. And I miss that so much. You've got to get used to really short showers. 30 second showers he has. 30 seconds. If you were a bit shorter, I'd get you in the sink with a rag. I'll wash myself with a rag on a stick. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you'd look like Albert Steptoe, wouldn't you? <laughs> you've got to be careful with your water. There are water points regularly along the canals. It's sod's law that you run out when you're in the middle of nowhere on a cold night when the canal's frozen over, isn't it? Yes. Now, the same goes with diesel. We carry about 160 litres, which is about 35 gallons of diesel. And it's impossible to say how long that lasts because it depends how many miles you're doing if you're using it for heating. Generally, it will last about, well, one litre will last about an hour. Give or take about half a litre. Depends on your engine. But again, you can fill up at marinas and lots of places sell diesel. Loads of places. In the winter, it's important to make sure you've got enough coal or logs if you've not got a diesel-fired central heating system. And again, you'll find that a lot of coal merchants will come and deliver coal. There's fuel boats that carry coal and logs. As for gas, we use two 13 kilo gas bottles. And there's a bit of a shortage of those at the moment after the pandemic. Is it as short as me? It's not quite as short as you, but just make sure you've got enough of everything. Because, as I said, sod's law dictates that you will run out on a cold night in the middle of nowhere where the canal's frozen over. And it's not fun to sit on a cold boat with no water. Reason number five, you will hurt your boo-boo. <laughs> there's, there's a saying that you're not a true boater until you've fallen in the canal at least once. Now we can't be true boaters because we've not fallen in yet. Not touch, fully. Touch wood, not fully. Like one or two limbs have gone in and some orifices may have got wet, <laughs> but we haven't gone in completely. You all right? Orifices. Poor old Sean is always the worst off. Oh. Uh, you once, fell between the towpath and a steel rail and really hurt his boo-boo. That hurt. He fell out of a kayak. I have. Well, you kind of half fell out of a kayak, didn't you? But well, he went in the water. I completely fell out of he it. He sliced his head on a stove fan. I fell off a diving board in Guernsey. <laughs> that one you. That one Norman the bread man. <laughs> but you've got to be careful. It can be a dangerous environment because once things are wet, they get slippy and it's easy to slip, especially around locks and swing bridges and when you're jumping on and off the boat, so you've got to be careful. Reason number six. It's a good job I've got an extra thumb in it. He's got, he's got three. Is the loneliness. 
You would imagine that being out in the open countryside, the solitude, the peace would be lovely. And don't get me wrong, it really is, isn't it? It is. But sometimes things happen that can make you feel quite lonely or alone. Take, for instance, last November when Sean's dad died. Yeah. Uh, I felt quite helpless being out in the middle of nowhere, not being able to get there. So yeah, you, yeah, you feel helpless. Because you are traveling, you're gonna be away from your inner circle, your friends and your family if you've got any. And when things like that happen, it it's can be hard. It can be tough to deal with because at the time we were in lockdown and luckily we got permission from the Canal and River Trust to move the boat closer to family so that we could at least be near the family during that bad time. But at least make sure you've got some internet or a phone so you can talk to people wherever you are and yeah. just take the edge off it. Number seven is all to do with poo. <laughs> and I can sum it up really in one sentence, like my last psychiatrist said to me before he hung up on me and never answered the phone again. Yeah. Colin, you need to deal with your own sh <laughs> You can't say that. I just did say that. Now, unless you're gonna kind of go and do it in the woods. You've got to learn to deal with it yourself because a boat hasn't got a sewerage system. You can't just flush it away like you do in a house or leave it in the woods in a little pile. <laughs> you can flush it into a holding tank or drop it into a cassette or into a bucket or a bottle like a separating composting toilet or even burn it. There's incinerating toilets nowadays. There is. Use a lot of energy. Mm. But sooner or later, you've got to get rid of the waste. Who and, has? Who well, has? Well, you have. <laughs> Sean enjoys playing in the fudge bucket more than I do. That sounds like a euphemism, doesn't it? That sounds wrong. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but I, I did try it once. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Why do you always have to read something when you're having a poo? <laughs> I don't you know. Do, you do it, don't you? Yes. I think everybody, do, you do it, don't you? You read. I mean, what did you do before you had a mobile phone? I used to read the back of the shampoo bottle. I know. I never and go without my phone. I know all the ingredients to Vosine, even now. It was Timotei in the last tech, wasn't it? <laughs> Speaking of brown goo, oh. number eight is mud. Oh, mud. Now, some of us don't mind getting mucky. In fact, shot. No, we'll not go there. Uh, some of us don't mind getting mucky, but you might be a bit like Hyacinth Bucket Bouquet. Bouquet. Or a bit like Margot from The Good Life. Oh. And, and you might not get, you might not like getting mucky and muddy, but to be honest, especially in the winter, that's what this life is really all about, isn't it? All about mud. Mud, splashing in, I'd love a mud bath. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, is it Turkish bath, is it? Or is that something different? Like some, I don't know, I just read something about a bathhouse on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'd love to have a mud, not mud though, I'd like like melted chocolate, wouldn't you? Like just oh. tip of, like a few dozen boxes of Ferrero Rocher yeah. and melt them down. Oh. Yeah, you oh. Talking but, of mud, also by a brown dog. Yeah, <laughs> dogs don't care how mucky and wet and muddy they get. So if you've got a brand new bow, try not to get white furnishings because <laughs> they ain't gonna last long. It can get a bit filthy, especially in the winter. The towpath can be ankle deep or more in mud. So make sure you get a good pair of wellies. Almost there, number nine. Yeah! It's probably one of the most common questions we get asked. Does it get cold on a narrow boat? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But if you've got no coal. If you've got no heating on, but it would get cold in a house if you've got no heating on. The difference on a boat is that it's generally either hot or cold. It's, it, you can't, like in a house where you have like thermostats in rooms 
and you kind of regulate the temperature of the house. You can't really do that in a boat. It's either the heat's on or it's not. You have to, you have to regulate it with windows. <laughs> yeah, we can be sat in the middle of January where it's blowing an arctic gale outside and we can be sat in our shorts and t-shirts on the sofa in front of the stove with the windows and hatches and doors open <laughs> sweating as cobs up, can't we? Yeah. So, yeah, it is a bit more difficult to regulate, but it's not cold, it can be very warm. And in the summer it can be very warm as well, because we can't have air conditioning, because it uses too much power. It never really gets warmer inside than it is outside, but it can get a bit stuffy inside. But yeah. you can take all the windows out and that makes it a bit better. So how do we keep the boat warm in winter? Well, we've got a diesel-fired central heating system which heats the radiators and the towel rail and it heats the water in the winter too. But we also have a solid fuel stove which we can burn either coal, uh, well, it's more like smokeless briquettes. Yes. Didn't they used to dance at Radio City Music Hall in New York? The briquettes. Briquettes. Yeah, with the frilly skirts and the high heels and the big kicks and that. They did, didn't they? I don't think they were called briquettes. So uh, the dancing briquettes are, are seasoned logs. We burn seasoned logs, and they smell nicer. Yes. Than than the, the than the briquettes. The briquettes tend to make the boat a bit dusty. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, does it get cold in an arrow boat? Well, no. But keep the fire going. <laughs> Finally, number 10, Woo! if we hadn't already put you off, is it's not really for the gormless. <laughs> well, it's not, is it? <laughs> You've got to have your wits about you to be a boater, because there's a lot of things to remember. You've got to be considerate, slow down when you go past other boats. Moor up securely so that those that don't slow down don't pull your pins out. Yes. <laughs> be considerate at locks, wait until another boater is coming. Don't waste water check your batteries in your smoke detectors and your carbon monoxide detectors make sure you've got enough fuel and water and diesel and gas and coal and shopping and food there's all sorts of things and you've got to have your wits about you to be a boater so if you're a little bit gormless why does he always point at me you might need a bit of help <laughs> There you go, 10 reasons why you shouldn't live on a narrowboat if you're a sensitive soul like me. But there are loads more reasons why you should. And in the next episode, we'll give you 10 reasons why you absolutely should live on a narrowboat. Yay! It's such an amazing experience. And we'll go more into that next week. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video. If you want to help support the channel, you can do so via Patreon. There's a link in the video description or via YouTube members. Join as a VIP member. There's a link up above Sean's head <laughs> where you'll get all sorts of exclusives and perks. I hope we've given you something to think about because next week we'll give you even more to think about. See you then. Bye-bye. Ta-da. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's raining! So we're gonna balance it out. That bit won't be in. <laughs> it always cuts me out. <laughs> because as soon as you put a boat in water, a boat comes the other way. I've completely forgotten where I'm going. I've forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten. Things like... He <coughs> says, let's do all this in one take. Electric, gas, diesel. What else? Water, tree. <laughs> That's just complete b You can't say that! <laughs> you alright there? I got something in my eye. Uh, your finger. I knew I, knew I was going to f*** that one up. Yeah. You can't say that! Have I got toast on there? Nope.